Hi everyone, this is Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. We're gonna paint a lovely painting today called Winter Dream. Here it is. And it's gonna be easy and fun. You ready? All right, I have a funny story about this painting. I actually recorded myself painting this yesterday. And <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking about, but I left out these green stripes. And you can't very well easily put them back in. Uh, so we're re-recording this. I hope I do it right this time. Anyway, it's December 30th of 2020 that I'm when I'm recording this. And I think the COVID pandemic has affected my brain being indoors for a year. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. We're going to paint this lovely little painting. And you'll see the first thing I'm doing is I am taking a large brush. It doesn't really matter what shape, just your, one of your biggest brushes. I'm putting water on this 16 by 20 pre-primed white canvas. You can use a smaller canvas. You can use different brushes. It really doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. I like to moisten my canvas with water because uh, then my paint will move more smoothly across the canvas. I'm painting in Denver. Uh, Sipping and Painting Hamden is in Denver, Colorado, and it's dry here, so I need, I need to moisten my canvas. I'm going to be using three brushes today, small, medium, and large. I'm also going to be using some napkins and some primary paint colors, yellow, red, blue, white, and black. And I have a water jar, and I'm wearing an apron. That's really important. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to pick up my black paint on my largest brush and I'm going to just put a thin layer all over this canvas of black paint. Black paint. And the, the fact that I put water on the canvas first just helps keep my paint thin. I don't want it to be dripping all over me and the countertop here, but I do want to keep it thin enough that it's just easy and quick to paint on, and then it will dry quickly as well. If I put it on really thickly, like the way it comes out of the bottle, um, it'll take a long time to dry. So this is, uh, the water on the canvas does just keep things light, and it'll help it dry more quickly by being, uh, having a little bit of water in it. All right, so we're using acrylic paint today. Acrylic paint, as you may know, is a newer kind of paint. It is uh, only been around a few decades, I believe, um, because it has plastic in it. Uh, the word acrylic means is a kind of a plastic. And so the wonderful thing about painting with acrylic paints is it is water soluble until it dries. And then it, um, it's almost like a solid plastic after it dries. And it dries really quickly. So if you uh, have seen, have you uh, ever oil painted, or if you see someone who has like Bob Ross's class used to be oil uh, classes on TV, but oil paintings take a very long time to dry. They actually technically don't dry, they cure, uh, which means that they, um, they get hard through the process of oxidation and acrylic paint because it has water in it it evaporates so evaporation oops almost picked up my blue evaporation versus oxidation so i'm covering my whole canvas with black and notice i'm even getting the sides and when i'm completely finished with um painting it black i'm gonna um at later on when this is dry and I can pick it up, I'm going to actually, uh, you know what I could do? Yeah, I, I was just gonna say I can actually flip it and then uh, paint the bottom as well. I was just thinking I might be able to pick it up now and do that, but I don't wanna get paint all over me. So I'll just wait till later and then I'll paint it on the bottom. The reason I paint it on the bottom is that's called a gallery wrap. And what that means is that when you paint it all over, you don't have to put it in a frame uh, because it looks finished on all the different sides. So uh, I really recommend that way. If you wanna save money, you won't have to get a frame. 
it also looks a little more modern. And so I'm not adding paint, I'm just smoothing out what I already have. Just smoothing out what I already have. And I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes. Uh, I also want to let you know that you should let your water do all the work. And what I mean by that is swish the brushes in the water constantly, just not constantly, but um, a lot. It's going to feel like constantly. I swish my brushes in the water a lot uh, for two reasons. One, because uh, acrylic paint dries quickly on the painting, but it also dries quickly on your brushes and it will ruin them if you let the paint dry on your brushes. You have to keep keep cleaning your brushes. And the second reason is if I do, if I use the um, jar a lot and I really switch my brushes, then I won't use as many napkins because a lot of it's gonna be just testing to see if my uh, brush is clean. I don't need to wring out any paint in a napkin. So I wanna, you know, not kill trees if I can help it. So I'm waiting for this to dry, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna show you the next step. We can already get started on that. And here's the next step. Do you see these little speckles and spots in the painting? I'm gonna take the stick of a small brush, a very fine detail brush, and I'm going to just use the stick and I'm going to pop the stick in the white paint and then I'm gonna to touch it to the black canvas. Now my canvas is still wet, but just touching on a dot here and there is not gonna hurt that paint, it will still dry. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna, while my black background is drying, I am going to cover this entire canvas with just lots and lots and lots of little tiny white dots. And this will take a while. You might wanna put on some music at your house and while the background's drying, just enjoy the mesmerizing feeling of this repetitive putting on the white dots. And maybe, maybe you have some music playing and you want to tap to the beat. I like to do that. And I am making these dots random. And occasionally my brush stick might skip a bit and I get those double dots or something a little bit more messy, that's okay. No worries, nothing has to be perfect in this painting. In fact, I really believe that perfection is the enemy of art. Your personality is supposed to show through in your painting and if it were too perfect, it wouldn't look like you painted it. It would look like uh, something the computer did. So we wanna, we wanna make sure that we don't touch wet paint, no. But uh, we also want to make sure that your painting isn't too perfect, that it has your personality in it. Because only you can paint like you. Only I can paint like me. And that's true for everyone. And when you paint, you express yourself. And expressing yourself is really a beautiful thing. And we want to see your talents and personality and feelings coming out on the canvas. Um, in a way that no one else can. And that's what I love about painting the most. I can look at a couple of different paintings that were painted at the same time with the same inspiration photo, the same composition, meaning the same picture, uh, but done by two different people and they'll look totally different. And that, that is my very favorite part of, about teaching art is seeing how everyone's is just a little different than the next person. Sometimes they're a lot different and that, that really makes my heart sing. All right, lots of dots, lots of dots. And the person who painted this one, it actually looks like she splattered a little bit. And splattering, I can show you how to do splattering. I don't do splattering in the winter because it kind of makes a mess. And I really don't want to make a mess in my studio if I can help it. Uh, so this is working out really, really well. I'm getting all these little dots and I think it accomplishes pretty much the same effect. 
She has a few more right in this general area for some reason. I guess that's the focal point area. So she wants it a little more sparkly in through here. And I say she, I'm looking at this painting, which was um, our former, uh, an artist who used to work here, Cynthia Ernstein. She's a tremendously talented person. She did not create the original painting, but she did this copy. And so we're copying her copy. Um, but yeah, we've had the privilege of having lots of different artists in and out of here, and they've left some really beautiful work for us. Okay, so uh, I wanna show you, uh, so there is this thing uh, where you splatter and basically you get your paint, you get your brush, get a large brush. It works better with stiff brushes, I think. I don't, this is not a stiff brush, so it might not work for me, but I'll show you, I'll just give it a, the old college try, right? So I've got a little drop of water on that because I popped it into my jar and then I shook it off, dabbed it on the napkin, but it's got a little water in it. And basically to splatter, you put some wet paint on your brush and then you hold your finger like that and you pull it toward you and you try to do it fast. You try to do it fast. Um, and when it flicks back, in theory, it's supposed to make splatters on the canvas. These bristles are a little too soft, I think. It's making little splatters, but they're so small you can't even see them. Um, if you have natural brish, bristle brushes, like hog br bristle brushes, those are the ones that are stiff. Uh, that tends to work better. These, they, these are made out of nylon and they just don't spring back. Uh, but you know what, like I said, it's not really my style to do that. I would rather just use the bottom of the stick to make dots. All right, so my canvas is still wet. And the way I know it's still wet is you can see the shine, right? Lots of shine. When it's uh, not shiny, then I know it's dry. This one's not shiny. Uh, another way that you'll, you can know is if you touch the back of your uh, canvas on a dry one, it feels room temperature, the same temperature as anything else you put your hand on. But on a wet painting, it'll feel a little bit cooler. Uh, and that's very true when you're painting with watercolors, especially uh, the back of the paper will feel cool to the touch. The third way that I know if something is wet is I pick it up and I wipe it on a the person next to me, and if they scream, then it was wet. I don't recommend that way, okay? Especially if you have to live with those folks during COVID. Uh, they, they tend to not like that too well. There's a few different ways you can dry your paintings faster, uh, ways that we do it at the studio all the time. This is working really well. Just use a fan or something in, that creates a fan like this. This is really drying quickly this way. Another way is to pick it up and wave it around the room and let it be the fan. And then another way is a blow dryer. We use all of those techniques here in the studio. This one works just great. So you can see that the streaks, the shininess is in streaks now. And this is working really, really well for me. So in a moment, this painting will be dry. And since you're watching this on recording, you can stop uh, recording when I start, if yours is not dry yet, and just take your time and pause and play all you want. All right, so this is almost dry now. That's, that worked really well. Denver's a dry place, the air is dry, so, especially in the winter. All right, so I'm going to just put that aside and it's almost dry. I'm gonna go ahead and mix my colors. Actually, for this blue stripe up here, I don't even need to mix a color. Um, I'm gonna be using phthalo blue, and phthalo blue is a really nice blue for all kinds of things. Um, it's a little bit dark, so I am gonna mix a little bit of white into it. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white on a big brush, and then I'm gonna 
just mix in, not to all of my blue. When I mix, I only use a little at a time. I don't want to ruin a whole pile of paint. I just want to start out with a little bit and then if I need more, I can make more. Anyway, so I added a little bit of white to that blue so it'll show up better on black. You can see that some of that blue is lighter. All right, so I'm gonna take some of that blue on my big brush, see that? And I'm gonna streak in this stripe right here. Okay, so notice, now your, paint, your canvas may be a different size than mine. Mine's a 16 by 20. Yours might um, you know, be different but just kind of eyeball where that is. It's, here's half, okay? And here's half of half, right, a quarter. And this is in that quarter area, right, right in the middle. So it's about an eighth of the way down. All right, you don't have to remember fractions. Just eyeball it. All right, so I'm gonna start with my paint and I'm going to follow that one, swoop down and then swoop up and I'm gonna turn my brush a quarter turn. And when I do that, see this is a flat brush. And then I was just painting with one side. So I had this really nice big broad area at the base and I'll do it again. So this is the flat part of the brush, flat. But then when I curve and then I turn my brush just a quarter turn, I get a nice sharp point. That's what I want is that nice sharp point. All right, now I still have some paint on my brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this stripe down there. And notice that it's about halfway down the painting. Maybe a tiny bit lower than halfway, but pretty close, pretty close. So I'm just gonna go right about halfway down, just a tiny bit lower. And this one is going to go up and then down. And yes, it is mixing with a little bit of that white on my stars that aren't dry. And that's fine, that's fine. I like how that looks. And notice that little quarter turn, by doing a little quarter turn, this is a fan brush, big fan brush, little quarter turn, I get that nice sharp point in there. Good. So far, so good. Now here's the thing about a fan brush, not a fan brush, a flat brush, flat brush. It has two sides. See that fat and skinny, fat, skinny. This is the broad side of the brush. This is the side where it's really thin. You can paint those broad strikes, uh, strokes like that, or watch this, if you just keep it on the skinny side, you can paint lines, skinny lines, and it's just you can make them just as skinny as you would the skinniest little detail brush just by using that flat part. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use that flat part of my flat brush and just make some lines. And these are some of those lines in the reflection. All right. So I have that stripe, I have that stripe, and I have some lines. That is pretty much it for my blue. That's all I need it for. So now what I'm gonna do, as long as I have this on my brush, this blue, I'm gonna go ahead and mix some green paint. So the green, this is the green. I'm going to pick up some yellow paint. I'm gonna mix it into some of my blue. And again, remember what I said, don't mix all of your paint colors together. Don't use all of your paint, because if you mess up, you, you might want more of that color later and you, you might need to remix some. So there's some green, but it's much too dark. I need to pick up some white and make it more of a minty green. Now, every kind of paint that you use, every brand and every type of paint, is gonna be a little bit different in how your green mixes and how the other colors mix. There's lots of different kinds of blue. There's cerulean blue and phthalo blue and cobalt blue and primary blue, uh, ultramarine blue. So depending on the kind of blue that you're using, 
your color is not going to be exactly like the color of that this artist and that's okay it doesn't have to be it's still going to look good no one's ever going to see the original they're just going to see yours and they're going to love it so that's my prediction so don't worry if it doesn't look wintry win, uh, winter green minty like mine it, yours might look a little more limey depending if it if it's limey you need more blue less yellow but if it's you know avocado or grass or something just just try to get it close and don't worry about it if it's not perfect it's okay all right see this great big green one right here all right i'm gonna start right below this one because that one does the same thing and that one i'm gonna show you the shape it's gonna go up and then just like the blue one but then it's gonna come down again and i'm gonna turn the brush like I did at the end so I get a sharp point, okay? So I'm gonna start up here, start, and then I'm gonna go swoop down, and then go up, and then go down. I'm gonna end at a point. All right. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm going to swoop down, swoop up, end at a point by turning just a half a turn. Now, what I like about this one, this has a little dark green and light green. It's almost like they didn't stir the paint together when they mixed it. And I kind of like that. So I'm going to try that one more time right over the top. See if I can get a little bit of that white to come through. Too much, but you get the general gist of it. All right. So that's, there's that green one. And notice this green one, that one's darker for some reason, not sure why, but again, it doesn't have to be exactly like the, the next one. Now that one goes slightly above this green one. Do you see that? But it leaves room for this purple stripe. All right, so I'm gonna let go from here. And this one's kind of a baby one. It doesn't do a lot. And a little bit of a turn. There's another one down here. That one's just above. It almost starts at the same spot, just above the blue, but it goes up at a sharper angle up here. So just above the blue and then shh. Now, if you are painting along with me and your stripes are in a different place than mine or you don't have room for one, it doesn't matter. I'm sure these were arbitrary when the teacher put them in. I'm sure of it. So don't worry, okay? Don't worry. And then remember what we did with those stripes down here? I'm gonna put those in with the skinny part of that brush again. If this, if this using the skinny part of the brush is too hard for you, don't do it. Uh, get a small brush, a detail brush, and use that instead for these skinny lines. Just keep them skinny no pressure to make it skinny it's no pressure no pressure when i was making these i was putting quite a bit of pressure but on these lines no pressure be sure to wash your brushes really 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 well and i'll tell you why we're going to keep doing what we've been doing but if we have green on our brush and then we use it to make this pinky purple color, guess what? We'll make brown and that would look terrible, I think. So we wanna make sure that our brush is really clean. All right, so to make this pinky purple color, I'm gonna need some blue. Remember, I'm glad I didn't use all that blue. And I'm gonna pull in some red 
and I'm gonna make a purple out of it because purple plus blue equals red. Purple plus blue equals red. All right, but that's too dark to go on my canvas, right? So I'm gonna need to pick up some white and stir that in. And what I'm going for, now, I might not have the same shade of purple that that person did in her painting, right? That's okay, that's okay. Everybody mixes it a little bit differently and depending on the kind of paint she used that day and the, the brand and the color, it's gonna look a little different and that's fine. That's fine. We have 500 different paintings in our gallery here at the studio. Um, 400 of them are in our back room and 100 of them are on the walls. Close enough. And um, each one was painted with different colors. We have about 50 different colors of paint. Uh, we use Blick paints. Um, we have about 50 different colors. And so we like to just, when we teach, we like to just use basic primary colors to teach. And so uh, what results may vary. That's what I'm trying to say. Results may vary. All right. So I've got this light purpley color and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be okay with it. I'm just stirring, stirring, stirring. All right, I think it's gonna be, I'm hoping that's gonna be close enough. All right, see that one up there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for that one. So I have to think about where it is. It's big and it arches up, but then at the tip of it comes in between this blue and this green one. <laughs> I didn't leave a lot of space in here. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. It's okay if I mess up, no one will even know. So I'm gonna start up and it's gonna arch and then I'm gonna twist a little bit and I'm gonna come down. All right, that looks a little funny. Let me see if I can fix that. Yours might look different because you're, we're not measuring perfectly, right? Just make sure that your curves feel and look smooth when you paint them. That's really the important thing. They just need to look smooth. And so sometimes I may need to make mine a little different than what someone else did because my painting's already a little bit different. That's okay. Just make sure that the curve feels smooth, okay? Smooth curve. Well, that didn't look smooth. Okay, good. Then I've got another one down here, same paint, same paint on my brush. I'm gonna come right below this blue, it almost touches. This one's gonna go right next to the blue and then it's gonna curve down a bit, so. They're almost like pointy fingers just pointing into the center. It's actually a really great composition because it brings your eye to the center where all these dots are. Um, I like this composition. All right, now I'm gonna do this one. And this one's a little thinner, so I'm gonna have to turn my brush a little earlier and it's gonna end in the middle here. I just picked a little bit of white highlight, white up, just to add a little bit of that highlight color. These have a little highlight to it, I like that. I'm not gonna worry about the ends of these being perfect. If I really you know, was concerned about it, I could take a fine detail brush, I can make the ends you know, more perfect. But you know what, is it worth it? We're just gonna end up painting big trees over these anyway, so I, 
I don't think it's really worth our time to do. But if, if you want to make your ends perfect with a really fine detail brush, go ahead. No one's going to stop you. I am going to add that purpley color down here, also in the lines. Skinny, skinny lines. Notice I'm not making them perfectly uh, straight, you know, stacked up because this is supposed to be water ripples, I think. They're definitely reflection ripples. So I don't want anything to look perfect. It'll mess it up. Again, no perfection, okay? If you are a perfectionist, fight the urge, okay? All right, so I think that's pretty good for our background. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I hope you are too. And I always, you know, I'm happy if mine is 80% good, I'm happy. It's never gonna be perfect, never. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paint in, take a medium flat brush this time, and I'm gonna paint in that snow. And I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping my flat brush in white paint just to really load those bristles. And forget this thing, but just notice that there's some snow and we're just gonna kind of squiggle that in. I'm gonna just squiggle in some snow. And I can try, you know, look at that and try to sort of approximate it, but it's never gonna be exactly the same and that's okay. That's fine. Notice there's black in between. It's not a solid, um, it's not a solid chunk of white. And I did put a little water in my brush just, just now because I want it to be sketchy looking like that. Yeah, keep it sketchy, keep it sketchy. Good enough, good enough. Not exactly the same, not perfect, good enough, don't you think? This one uh, does end and the end is a little bit neater. You can always touch things up, no worries. Don't worry, be happy. So, yeah. If I sing it, then I'll be violating copyright laws on YouTube. So I'll spare you that. But it's a good, good reminder. Don't worry, be happy. You can whistle at home. All right. And then white lines, white lines, just like all the other lines, white lines. Try to keep them thin, no pressure. No pressure. Don't worry, be happy. Good. So far, so good. What do you think? Doesn't look exact. It's not, not supposed to. Clean your brushes really well, okay? Clean them well. I'm actually gonna use one of those skinny detail brushes, a small brush, and I'm going to put a trunk just for placement so I can see where those trees are and the trunk will be the way I start. I'm gonna use white to do that. It's gonna get covered up anyway. So in the center of my painting, Usually I don't like things centered, but this one's dead center pretty much. Um, there is a small tree and it doesn't touch down into the snow. You see that? There's no stumps. Uh, so put a stick representing the, that trunk. And then there's a much taller one next to it. And so I'm gonna start that one oh, right about here. I'm gonna pull down. Don't worry if it's not straight, it doesn't really matter. This one goes down about the same 
um, clean the same level as the other one. All right, but then this one's really odd. Look at how high that one is, it's levitating. And it starts way up here in the purple, do you see that? So I'm going to start here and then I'm gonna pull down and I'm gonna stop right above there. Now on this side, these do go down even a little bit lower than this middle one. And this one's huge. It starts way up here in the blue. And it goes almost down to that white line, that white scribble. All right, now we have four, and I'm gonna need a fifth one. This one's shorter, and it's on the same level as this middle one. And it goes up just past the green stripe. Maybe a little bit higher. All right, good. So that's the, tr those are gonna be the trunks of my trees. And so that just helps me with placement. All right, for the next part, I'm gonna use my medium brush. Once again, I know I'm going fast, but that's the beauty of you have a um, recording, so you can just stop and slow down, right? All right, so I'm gonna use, remember that green we made before, that minty green color? That's the color we're gonna use for the trees. But I, and I'm gonna add white to one side of the tree, but I'm not gonna add that yet. So make sure the minty green color you have doesn't have too much white in it. I'm gonna paint some darker branches first, and then I'm gonna come back and add a little white to my paint to get the highlights. So I'm gonna use a flat medium brush, and I'm gonna come down, and I'm going to just scribble on branches. I am deliberately, or flick, that works too but make them longer at the base because Christmas trees or winter trees, evergreens rather, they have, they're, they have a triangular shape. And so these are just dabs. That's my first layer are just dabs. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some highlights to the top but this first layer, they're just dabs. They're just dabs. And what am I mean by dabs are like these sweeps. See how I'm sweeping the paint out? But keep that triangle shape as best you can. Try to keep a triangle shape. And each branch should be a little bit, you know, a little bit of definition, a little bit of definition, like it's a little bumpy. Do you see that? All right. Now remember, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna highlight a little bit too with some minty green. This is just the kind of the under layer. Oops, that one went a little low, that's okay. I have to tell myself, don't forget the, the uh, triangular shape. I need to mix up some more paint for myself. Running out of paint. And if I didn't mix it really well, that's okay. Every tree has a slightly different color and shape and personality and just like people do. So that's okay. You can see that my one side of the tree is a slightly different shade of green. That's okay. It, it actually gives our trees character just like people would have character. They look different than the next person.
All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little more white and I'm going to mix it into that green because I want this next, the highlights to be much lighter. I want them to be minty, mintier, mintier. Yeah. Something like that. You know what I mean? Okay. And I'm going to emphasize that more on the right side of the tree. That differentiates the right side of the tree from the left side of the tree. And it suggests that there's more light on the right side. Now that looks funny to have it all that way. So I can just add a little tiny bit of it, less pressure on the other side, not as much, just less pressure. So lighter on the right side. Just a little bit of light on the on the uh, darker side. Try to keep that triangular shape to your tree, okay? Just a little bit to highlight on the left. All right, now my trees aren't exactly the same as hers. Yep, that never happens. But I can fix them up a little bit. I'm gonna take a tiny little detail brush and I'm just gonna make the points a little higher. I want pine trees to have a really clear and defined point. And I couldn't get that with that big brush. So I can go in and just make them a little bit taller by just adding really delicate little branches at the tippy top. Because I just want to keep that triangle shape. And with that big brush, I want the medium sized brush. It was harder to do that. Point at the top, point at the top. Always have a point at the top of a pine tree. That tells your eye, hey, I'm a pine tree. They talked to you, didn't you know? Just make sure the top of your tree has, has little branches and a point. All right.
All right. So what I'm missing from this painting now, and my trees are bigger. Yeah, they are. That always happens. You're gonna have your own style when you paint. I tend to paint trees big, but you may have painted your smaller. It's your own style. Do you see these little grasses in here? I want you to see that they're painted with that same green, but notice how they had a little bit of green on the brush and a little bit of white on the brush almost at the same time to make those look like they're not blended well. The paint wasn't blended well. So if you have some green, try to take some that's got the white already in it. So it's like a swirly ice cream cone. We're gonna make our grass coming up from this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna put the middle ones on first. I'm gonna flick up, 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 flick out, flick up. So that's those. I'm gonna make these over here. Flick up, 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 or flick up and out. That's that little bunch. I'm gonna put another little bunch over here under this tree. There's another little bunch down here coming from this level. All right, now notice these lines. Now what that's supposed to represent, this is an interesting painting, that's supposed to be the reflections of those trees in the water. But these trees are big and those reflections are tiny. But that's what makes this painting interesting. It, it does, it's impressionistic, it's not realistic. So notice this one goes lower, then this one's a little higher, this one's a little higher. So remember lower and then higher and then higher, okay? So we'll reflect this one down here. Then we'll come up a little and reflect this one here. Then we'll come up even higher, reflect this one here. Well, it's kind of a broken reflection. And we'll come here and reflect this one. And we'll come up higher here and reflect this one. All right. Now, once again, my painting is different than the original. But I'm happy with it. I hope you're going to be happy. I hope you're happy with yours, too. You're, <laughs> you're going to be. I hope you are. All right. When I finish my paintings, I always sign my name. You can see Cynthia put hers in the bottom left-hand corner. Doesn't really matter. You could put them in left or right. You decide. I'm gonna put mine in the bottom right-hand corner and I'm just putting my initials. She put her initials, I put mine and that's it. I'm done. Woohoo! That was a fun little painting. And you know, feel free to pause this instruction and tweak all you want. You can add a little more highlights or, you know, or not. Just tweak all you want or stop. I, my rule of thumb is if I'm 80% happy with the painting, I walk away and I'll tell you why I do that. I have messed up so many paintings that were, I was 80% there and then I went, oh, it's not good. I'm just gonna keep going. And then an hour later, I'm so frustrated that I thought, oh man, I should have stopped while I was head a long time ago, now it's all muddy. And then I, I just sometimes paint right over the painting the next day. Uh, so I, I'm going to soon just totally stop, walk away, and I'm gonna hit my own hand if I'm tempted to keep working on it. Because really the most important thing about knowing how to paint is knowing when to stop painting. So I'm gonna stop painting. I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think I am. Just a little more highlight right down there. All right. So I'm gonna slap my own hand. You don't believe me, do you? 
All right, I'm done. Thank you for painting with me. I really appreciate it. This has been Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. And oh, you know what? Hold on. There is one thing I'm going to do. I can barely see my grass. Uh, one thing is before you stop painting, just step back and look at your painting from five feet away. And I'll tell you why. If you were to go into a museum, they don't they don't have you looking at paintings really close. In fact, you'll make the, the guard really nervous if you look at your the paintings super close. You really have to see them about five to 10 feet away for the proper viewing distance. And if you look at a Monet or a Van Gogh up close, they look horrible. It's really far away that you can really see what they look like. Um, so do, before you end completely, just look at it five to 10 feet away and ask yourself, am I 80% happy with that painting? And if so, it, it means sign your name and uh, join me for another painting on another day. I'd love to paint with you again. All right, now I can see the grass. Can you get a little, little more contrast in it now? All right, that's it for me. Thanks, you guys. It's great painting with you. Happy New Year.